Welcome back to Lantern Insights. Today we're going to be looking at a very interesting matchup. I actually face the, the mirror in this game, so not something you see all that common when playing Lantern, but good to good to know some strategy strategies and, and tips for it. Uh, and we start off on a mulligan here. I think this hand is pretty close, uh, but Shadow Spear is essentially a mulligan already without Saga. It doesn't really do much in this hand, and it's kind of very reliant on Shredder plus Bobble to hit something. Uh, and I think with the two Glimmer Voids, like if they just have any interaction for the Shredder, um, you get pretty behind. Uh, same with that one. I just like to ship it back. I think with the Glimmer Void, um, yeah, like any interaction, you're just down a land and in a, in a really bad spot. Um, one thing, I, I'm currently playing the uh, Esper Tutors list, so I'll I have a, a link to the, the video here going over the deck, um, but just kind of mainly, I think this deck can mulligan a lot more aggressively than some other versions of Lantern, as it top decks pretty well, uh, just with so many tutors. Um, but we take the Welding Jar, turn one hand disruption. Um, we see a pretty interesting hand here. They revealed Gigantha at the start, and then we're seeing Thoughtseize, Inquisition, double Prismatic Ending, Mycosynth Gardens and Marsh Flats. So realistically, this could be anything. And when I first thought these, I was like, oh, maybe this is the mirror. And then I was like, no, it's probably not the mirror keeping a hand like this. Um, so I, I take the prismatic ending because we have Urza Saga and only Word of Invention in hand. Uh, if I take one of the thought seize effects, they are then able to use the other one to still get the were, and then they can double prismatic ending the two constructs. So I want to take one prismatic ending to still be able to apply some pressure uh, with this construct. And they're, they're going to lead on their marsh flats, grabbing, uh, shocking in their, their godless shrine. Uh, and Inquisition, obviously, I mean, we knew it was going to be one of the two. Uh, and we drew, find a, a third land here, which is actually really important, uh, as it means we're able to safely play the saga out knowing that we're going to be getting constructs and they they don't cast the other thought seeds here i guess they were um, kind of knowing that we didn't play anything means it probably wasn't a great top deck but the goal kind of for the rest of the game is for the thought seeds that we know about to be uh, kind of as as useless as possible uh, here yes yeah, so they're gonna run out the gardens they pass through i make a pretty big error here i uh, I was passed pass through and didn't make a construct. Um, I thought it was in like the wrong stage. Pretty big mistake knowing that they only have one removal spell in hand. Uh, fortunately, we're able to overcome it. Obviously, I mean, it happens sometimes when you're playing. You just um, you know, pass through a, a phase or something like that. So don't don't worry about it too much. If, uh, if it happens to you, you got to just keep playing here. We still make the one construct just because we want them to use the... Uh, use the prismatic ending and uh, we get codex shredder here i think like we we don't know for sure what they're on it could just like be esper control of some variety and with this this hand and i grabbed the codex shredder that's actually why i didn't crack the bauble uh, the turn before is because i knew i wanted to get codex shredder to use that to improve my draws here uh, so they run out of talisman and the prismatic ending that we that I, I knew about already, uh, meaning they have Thoughtseize plus one unknown in hand. Don't know exactly what that, that card is, but obviously not. Uh, could be like, could be a lot of things at this point. Uh, we mill the Glimmer Void and we find a Lantern here, which is actually pretty good. Um, basically our, our best draw here, as we're able to Inquisition, take the Thoughtseize, see that they have Academy Ruins, and then we play out our our lantern and from this point it's basically who can kind of get the most amount of mill rocks so something like ensnaring bridge we will actually take as if they find a um if they find an urza saga we could be in trouble but something like collective brutality we're going to mill as at this point it's just about finding more mill rocks importantly to note with their hand right now they have gardens on the battlefield and they're go soon going to have two gardens meaning that if they find one mill rock, they're very quickly going to have three. Uh, here, even with Academy Ruins, uh, we're able to mill uh, their Codex Shredder that they have, and also playing Gigantha, another good reason to keep Bridge. So even if they put uh, like if they put Codex Shredder back on top, we're able to 
to mill it still and I just with the uh, with the profane tutor plus the Urza saga coming off our our mill rocks are just going to outnumber theirs which will will allow us to um, close this out pretty pretty quickly they uh they concede pretty quickly here we uh we play one codex shredder and then uh we'll use it to to grab a second one and yeah we we see do see the ring so they're on a bit bit of a different version of lantern from ones that i normally play i, I typically stay pretty far away from the ring i don't think it's a very good card in lantern at all uh, but they're trying it and yeah i can't can't fault people for trying at all here uh, we do grab the pixis just to diversify our mill rocks if they somehow get a pithing needle through then we still have pixis and shredder um, and they, they concede here with three rocks uh, we're basically locked i think uh, it was somewhat lucky kind of finding the lantern uh, when we did however i mean that's part of why i played this build it's just because it, it top decks pretty well where we had a lot of relevant top decks there like it wasn't just lantern that puts us in that good position we have like 10 cards that we can draw there that are all very similar so it you might say oh it's like lucky that you hit lantern but no you had like 10 10 cards that you could hit that would have been just as good that would have got the same result um, now sideboarding for the lantern mirror uh, is very interesting as you know a lot of your cards things like pithing needle are going to hit cards from both sides and so it kind of comes down to a bit of threat diversification um kind of what uh, what you're able to bring in so you bring in ley line of sanctity obviously with so many discard effects codex shredder being a targeted mill effect uh, we're going to want that in we you do want as many copies of pithing needle as you can and uh one of the tricks to specifically post board games when likely both players have needle is kind of what what you put the pithing needle on and when we'll see that in the second game where what we put our pithing needles on is basically what lets us uh, win win that game uh, we bring in tesseret as it's a very good card to i mean like finding it off profane tutor i think it's very strong it's not super likely to be high on their needle priority so i'd say like their first two needles probably are not going on tesseret and they're likely not going to put one on tesseret until they see one until like they see tesseret on the battlefield and, and by that point you know then we can start getting getting value from it i also bring in padim uh, they have they're in, in white based probably have a decent amount of removal so might as well have it if we both have ensnaring bridge um you know it, it says if tied for the highest mana value you draw a card so even if you both have ensnaring bridge you're still getting that extra card and um, yeah in in terms of what we take out i think we can trim one ensnaring bridge because we have so many ways of finding it uh, it used to be kind of in Lantern where you could take out all of your ensnaring bridges, but with Urza Saga, I think it's still correct to leave some number in because if your opponent draws their copies of Urza Saga and you don't draw yours, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Whereas if you draw your copies and your opponent doesn't, you don't have to play the ensnaring bridge, so you can like you can hold it uh, if you're the one uh, on the construct plan. Uh, we take out Cookbook Shadow Spear. Neither of which are super useful. Welding Jar, I think because we've seen that they're on white version playing uh, Prismatic Ending, Welding Jar isn't super useful as it doesn't pr protect against exile effects. And then here we take out two copies of Lantern. This list is only playing three copies. Uh, generally, you want to take all but one copy out. I think it's, it is correct to leave one copy in the main, especially in a list like this where I have like so many ways of tutoring where if I have two mill rocks out already and, you know, or my opponent maybe is on a you no know, mill rock hand, just had um, disruption or anything like that, I get the chance to search my library. I can get that one lantern if I'm already ahead. However, it's not a card that you want unless you're kind of already ahead on the mill rocks, where it's just going to benefit your opponent if they're able to get it out. Uh, I think that's all for sideboarding. I think if I was on the play, I could maybe consider Ashiok. Uh, it's not super super necessary but it is good if they have something like an early saga they're not really going to be able to pressure the ashiok enough before the search trigger happens anything like that i think uh, ashiok would be good against and if i was on the play i'd be more inclined to bring him in maybe over something like padim 
we open up a pretty good hand here. No ley line, but we do have the early disruption, profane tutor. I think having access to the tutors can really be a a mirror breaker where you just have more more ways of finding the relevant cards when when you need them. Uh, got bubble for some early filtering. Uh, they're going to run out of Codex Shredder, so obviously they're likely going to be getting a few more mill rocks than us specifically because we don't uh, don't have one in this hand. And we're going to lead on the Thought Seize. You could lead on Needle on the Codex Shredder right away, but I, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, we have an interesting decision here looking at their hand. I don't think uh, it's correct to take another copy of Ghoul Caller Spell as without the Lantern, you know, it's not super useful. And I think the Needle here, because we have Saga, we see that they don't have a bridge. The Construct tokens do appear to be a, a good avenue to victory at this point in the game. And so taking the Pithing Needle to shut off that being prevented, I think is uh, is pretty relevant here. And they do happen to mill the one copy of Tezzeret that we brought in. A bit unfortunate, but... Um, and then they rip a Lantern right off the top. And so from here, I mean, they have two mill rocks, yes, uh, and they have a Shredder on top. Uh, however, they do kind of have to find something pretty quickly. And I think long... So we, we run out the Pithing Needle here. You could suspend the Profane Tutor, however, I think with them drawing a second Codex Shredder, their lock's just going to be like more so for them digging through their own deck than them locking us out of things. With what we have in hand between the War of Invention and Profane Tutor, like we can find our missing pieces. It's more so slowing them down, as we're going to be able to provide apply pressure with Urza Saga well the, in the time it takes them to find... Uh, find what they're missing and they do ha they have a saga on top but a saga on top is not one on the battlefield and so we're actually going to be able to get out multiple multiple constructs before they're able to get one and at this point they kind of desperately need a bridge and i don't think they quite understood how close they were to like needing needing a bridge here and we importantly we grab pithing needle with this saga and name urza saga as Essentially, we're saying find a bridge and you'll have you have the mill rock Find a bridge or we're gonna kill you and I think it's a very powerful position to be in basically We're saying you're dead next turn and if you find bridge well, I got three tutors right here um, One thing in the sideboard. Sorry. I didn't mention it when sideboarding but the card get lost That's in the sideboard only destroys creatures enchantments or planeswalkers uh, so it's not didn't bring it in in the matchup. You could take out an Urza Saga with it. However, you can't take out something like uh, Incineroar Bridge. Um, and here they like they leave us Saga on top. They got to be milling here. Um, I, I I think like regardless, we basically have this game locked up. You know, we apply like the dual thread of kind of we had our sagas first, and then just kind of kept them off the right cards. And you see where. They still had the lock, but they just weren't able to find kind of the right pieces in time. I don't know if they sideboarded Ensnaring Bridge out or if they just didn't see it, uh, but we were, were able to clean up, run pretty smoothly through them. And I actually think this version is pretty well suited for the mirror. Uh, you just have so many tutors, kind of a lot of redundant pieces where I think it's less susceptible to hand disruption and it's just going to have faster access to more pithing needles. It also... Like, I only need two slots for bridge post board, and I still effectively have 10 copies of it. Whereas a deck with fewer tutors, you know, is going to have to leave more bridges in, meaning they're bringing in less impactful sideboard cards compared to what I have. So overall, I think this this version it was definitely favored um, in kind of the mirror, the mirror matchup here. We didn't really see, get to see the ring go off. Obviously, I was able to keep them off it. I still don't think it's a card that you should play in lantern but if you want to try it and see how it goes would uh would love to see it anyway don't for don't forget to subscribe we are back to regular uploads and i will see you in the next one